Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Several different key issues that are happening right now in the world today. And of course, this article here on October the 29th on Brett Bart News, something that had kind of slipped past me here, says key Kurdish held border crossing falls to Iranian uh, control cuts U.S. Army land supply line to Syria. Now, that's pretty serious here. And you can see it here on the map here, the U.S. here, uh, inside over uh, here is Syria right here and of course that that Iranian uh, cutoff there from uh, you know you have Turkey here to the north but that has cut the supply line that the US has been using to get supplies over there to the Kurds over here on the eastern side of the of the uh, Euphrates River there and now that has been cut off uh, the U.S. has their, their base right here. Of course, they're getting supplies in from Turkey and to Hasaka. And, of course, then moving that on over to the Kurds over in the eastern part. Now it's going to have to be airdropped because Iranians have cut them off. Now, that brings up a whole new ball of wax. And that is, is the U.S. going to consider what has happened now with the Iranians a, a, a provocative action and the U.S. begin to strike back against the Iranians themselves directly. Uh, now, keeping in mind, these are Iranian-backed uh, militants that are fighting there in the area. So we don't know for sure whether or not uh, Iran themselves would get directly involved with the U.S. if that were to happen. But it still leaves to make, make some wonder, actually, how could this end up going in, in the first place? Now, also... And this is kind of old news as well. U.S. top general accidentally discloses that there are 4,000 American troops in Syria. Russia, they've got 10,000 there. As we've been seeing, that's already been coming out with Russia. And of course, Russia's had 130 plus soldiers killed in action here just in 2017 alone. So very, very uh, interesting figures there. But the point that the U.S. actually has 4,000 American troops inside of Syria is something that has never been made known before. According to President Obama, when he was president, we had a cap of 500 soldiers, special forces mainly to be working inside the country. But I have always believed that that was a, a total understatement. We've stated that on Israeli News Live before because there's too many things going on inside of Syria for the U.S. to only have 500 soldiers working inside. There are too many bases, too many needs. Uh, so even the 4,000, and at one point he even said, at 5,000. Uh, so I would tend to lean still towards the higher number. Maybe 5,000 is the more accurate way. But what does that do? That makes a more volatile situation between Russia and the U.S., both of them fighting for opposite uh, reasons inside of Syria. Of course, really for the same end goal, you know, and that is the economic stability for, for extra oil for their countries. Uh, so very interesting to see how that plays out. Also, in another article that came out that was I found that was very interesting here, and this is on the Duran. Russia exposes the flaw to the OPCW report into staged chemical weapons of attack in Syria. I always thought that the picture itself is worth a thousand words. Here you are dealing supposedly with children that are, are covered in sarin gas. And of course, it had to be a photo op. They make sure you want to see the uh, uh, these white helmets, the patch on their sleeve, the patch on their back. And of course, his bare hand on a sarin gas victim. He should be falling over dead like the child. That would be the reality of it. Well, this guy is smart enough to put on a glove. Not these two here, nor this one over here, nor that one over there. Oh, it's just a staged event. Let's look at some of the key points that they bring out. I thought it's kind of interesting. Victims appear before alleged attack happened. The Russian investigation of the events surrounding the incident discovered that 57 of the 200 alleged victims of the chemical weapons attack arrived at hospitals hours before the attack was said to have occurred. And in some cases, individuals arrived at the hospital over 100 kilometers away from the alleged attack site. Hmm. Doesn't that make you really wonder, right? All right. Second is the eyes of the victim, inconsistent with the exposure to sarin gas. Russian authorities examined the same photographs of alleged victims that the OPCW and the United States examined and concluded that the de de uh, delayed eyes of the victims, dilated eyes of the victims, were medically inconsistent with those which would have been exposed to sarin gas. Photos of the eyes of the subjects were included in a detailed slideshow, which is embedded below. 
Uh, three, crater from the bomb blast was from ground-based device, not a Syrian jet. Of course, you ever see it, it's just a little small, tiny hole in the ground. Nothing big, nothing fancy or anything. If it had been a jet, it would have been a heck of a lot bigger hole. Uh, also, they go on to say the fake White Helmet's first responders were nowhere near sarin gas. The well-publicized video of the first responders made public by the White Helmet's organization, a group with known links to Al-Qaeda, was deemed to be totally in a, inauthentic. The video show White Helmet members surrounding the crater where a sarin bomb had allegedly just been dropped, not wearing any of the proper protective gear, including gloves, body suits, and proper respirator masks. Russian officials described the event, said that those men would all have died nearly instantaneous, instant, instantly if they were really handling items that were covered in sarin. The Russian official describing the event said that those men would all have died. Okay, we already said that. The only logical conclusion is that the rescue effort was a stage display used for propaganda purposes in order to frame the Syrian government. Uh, number five, sarin samples were poured into the crater after the alleged attack and stage rescue operation. Number six, flawed methodology in the OPCW report. Russian officials called the OPCW report superficial, uh, amateurist, and unprofessional. Russia remains uh, fla flabbergasted that no one from the OPCW went to the site of the alleged chemical uh, bombing, even though safe opportunities were afforded, allowing them to do so. Instead, the investigation was slammed as being conducted remotely from New York, Geneva, and locations in Turkey. Furthermore, the so-called eyewitnesses questioned in Turkey lacked credibility as none could prove that they were actually at the site of the incident on the 4th of April, 2017. Number seven, U.S. politicizing the entire process. Well, I can agree with that. It's been very obvious from the very beginning that it has been a propaganda machine. Uh, you know, and I have to tell you, friends, back in uh, 20, uh, what was it, 2013, I guess, when they blamed uh, President Assad of gassing his own people where so many died in that event there near Damascus. I was right there. I was all for Obama sending in the troops and bombing Syria and everything else in order to get rid of Assad for what he, what the crime he had did against humanity. Only to find out later when the evidence through Aaron Erdem, the, the parliament member in Turkey, came out with the actual evidence presented before his own parliament where the Syrian gas had been smuggled by ISIS militants through Turkey and the Turkish government had worked with ISIS to get the sarin gas into the country there, and shortly thereafter it was used on a civilian population. Wasn't that a coincidence? Well, no doubt it was. <clears throat> Moving on in other news as well, the uh, V says, uh, website is reporting that U.S. spy planes scrambled amid fears North Korea is planning a missile test tonight. This came out just hours ago. This breaking news here, as we also know, too, that the activity has been detected at the North uh, Korea missile site ahead of Trump's visit to South Korea. Uh, that came out today. Of course, the president will not be visiting the demilitar demilitarized zone. Doesn't mean that he isn't going to land in South Korea, and that's still a big issue if you ask me. He should totally totally not go to South Korea. Don't need to be brave. That can be a stupid thing to be at this particular point. Uh, RT is also reporting today North Korea won't think twice about pressing a button if the U.S. strikes uh, defector and former diplomat warns. Yeah, jeez. Well, what do you expect? If they get attacked, they're going to retaliate. And it's a little bitty nation. Even Russia, President Putin said over the issue about Crimea, Back when, uh, when Russia helped Crimea to do their own vote and get their own autonomy, and of course they chose to go back and be part of Russia, President Putin made it quite clear. He said, if we can't win a conventional war against NATO, we will use nuclear weapons. That's what the underdog normally does. Israel is no different. And I love my own country, but Israel would do the same. They know they are outnumbered. And many times in the past, even with Golda Meir, ready to use nuclear weapons to stop the advance of the Arab nations on their country. But, so what can you expect out of North Korea? Can you blame them? I mean, I'm not here to support Kim Jong-un and a dictatorship that he, that he puts his people under and, and the brutality that these people have to live under. But nonetheless... That's their country. And there's got to be a better way to, to deal with this situation than to go to war. 
Moving on also, and one other news point here as well, this article here just came out, nearly 66 million people displaced globally, one quarter from Syria and Iraq. UN refugees uh, uh, chief has said on this, 17.2 million ref refugees under UNHCR's responsibility, registering a 70% increase since then. In Syria alone, 11 million people have been forcibly displaced. It is a crime against humanity what has happened in Syria. And you know, friends, I have to tell you, <clears throat> I love America. It's my home country. I do love this country, but I have to tell you the truth. We have really caused a lot of mayhem throughout the Middle East. And we can't say that we have not instigated the war in Syria. Sure we have. Right along with Saudi Arabia, Israel's been involved as well. Turkey's been involved. Everybody wanted to topple this man, Bashar al-Assad. For what? The most liberal of Arabic countries in the Middle East was Syria. Is that why they want to topple him? Because they wanted to bring him back Sharia law? I don't really know what the issue is. But we have caused a humanitarian crisis beyond belief. And for those of you... You know, because I know there's many that say, well, I don't care for the Muslims, no way. Well, you know, they, they have their right to believe the way they want. But remember, two million Christians were living near Damascus. Descendants of the House of Israel, 1.4 million of them are dead now. Thanks to ISIS and also thanks to the Western countries, not just the U.S., but NATO and their members that would not allow these Christians to leave and become refugees in the other countries. Only the Sunni Muslims, not the Shiites, not the refugees, or excuse me, the, the Christians either, just the Sunnis. I think they have plans for Europe. You ever think about that? It's not just the fact they didn't want none of these other groups here, but maybe there is a, an ulterior motive to what they're doing. Very strange. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. We have an incredible biblical teaching, and I was thinking about doing it tonight. I'm not quite done yet. If you've been visiting our, our YouTube channel, Danun Institute, go over there. I loaded a couple of older videos yesterday. I think they'll be a blessing to you. They were from years ago. But one of them in particular was really interesting because on that video, when I loaded it, I speak about the Chaldeans. I speak about Jeremiah chapter 50. Babylon, the last days. And I'll talk about doing an in-depth research on this subject that I was about to bring out. Well, the odd thing is I had no idea what was on the video. I just loaded the video. It happened to be in one of my files here, so I reloaded it just for old time's sake and for those that have never heard some of the older videos. And lo and behold, what I said in the video is exactly what I'm doing now. An in-depth look at the Chaldeans. And it's really interesting. I'm going to share one part of it with, with you, those that are watching here on the news part here, because I think you should look at this yourselves and think about this in light of biblical prophecy and the things that are going on. Look at, go back in the history of the United States, and I think that the Chaldeans go beyond just the U.S. I believe the Chaldeans have a lot to do with NATO in itself, but especially the United States, and even when you're looking at Jeremiah chapter 50 and chapter 51. But you have to remember, Mystery Babylon and the Chaldeans, they work hand in hand, but they're not necessarily the same people. All right. Now, if you look at Habakkuk, this is in the book of Habakkuk, verse 5, chapter 1. Watch what it says. Look ye among the nations, and behold, and wonder and marvelously, for behold, a work shall be wrought in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and impetuous nation that marched through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. Well, I'm sure the Palestinians would probably say it's Israel, but it has nothing to do with Israel because Habakkuk is talking about the Chaldeans and not Israel, all right? Uh, and it could be Israel could say that about others as well because that's happened to Israel many times. Their land has been taken over and they've been driven out as well. So uh, it's both ways for Israel in that case. They're terrible and dreadful. Their law and their majesty proceed, uh, proceed from themselves. Their horses are also swifter than leopards and are more fierce than wolves of the desert. Their horsemen spread themselves. Yea, their horsemen come from far. They fly as a vulture that hasted to devour. Sounds like a modern-day military, if you ask me. 
They come all of them for violence. Their faces are set eagerly uh, as the east wind, and they gather captives as the sand. You ever look at that? And we're talking about, I mean, think about it. For one, the Chaldeans, and if you look at it as U.S. history, we came to America, we drove out the occupants, which were the Indians, and took all their land. We gather up the dust. You're going to see that, right? Also, as we become a mighty nation, instead of truly serving the Lord the way we should, we've gone and battled all over the world. Now, granted, the Japanese picked the fight with Pearl Harbor, but then the United States, you know, they used two nuclear bombs on Japan. Didn't have to. We were already winning the war. But because we didn't get what we wanted, we decided to use Japan as a test subject. And of course, even though Japan lost the war, we are part of an occupying force there now. Same thing with Korea. It wasn't North and South Korea, it was just Korea. We got involved in that war for democracy purposes, and now we occupy half part of that, the, uh, the southern half of that, and the northern half is a separate country. The Russians back the north, and the Chinese back the north, and the United States back the south. Or, I, I, and granted, I'm sure the South Koreans really appreciate freedom more so than the north, but just think about what he says there. Think about Iraq. They come, all of them, of violence. Their faces are set eagerly as the east wind, and they gather captives as the sand. They scoff at kings and princes are a derision, and to them they deride every stronghold, for they heap up earth and take it. That's land, taking up the land. Then their spirit doth pass over and transgress. They become guilty, even they who impute their might unto their God. One nation under God. And we do so much evil in this world. Hmm. I think you'll find it interesting. It's going to really link together. Mystery Babylon still is Rome. But the Chaldeans, those astrologers, even as Daniel brings them out. And if I note, if you look in the book of Daniel, when you look at the Chaldeans, they're the astrologers, the magicians that come before uh, the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And of course, they don't know his dream, but yet they want to know his dream so they can tell him the interpretation. A spiritual type of people, but without the anointing. Now, I'm not saying that all Americans are about like that by no means. I'm an American as well. But the point is, we have a lot of fake Christianity in this world today. So anyway, I'm going to be going into this and hopefully I can put it together real nice for you and make it look good and really share some incredible in insights from this Habakkuk, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, and the list just goes on and on. I'm Stephen Benoon. By the way, too, we loaded a video about my wife. Those of you that are wanting to know how she is doing, uh, it is a very serious situation that she is going through. Uh, we have loaded a video on Danoon Institute tonight uh, talking about her condition, the treatment that she's going through, and also asking for your help. Um, she does have, not fully diagnosed, but she does have a situation that once we know for sure in a couple of months, it could be life-threatening. And so we have sought a way to uh, the doctors, I should say, not just we, but the doctors that, that are working with her have already are, are taking an aggressive uh, approach naturally because there is no conventional cure for her. Uh, it is something that runs in her family, so it is a very high risk for her. Uh, I do talk about that on, on the video there that I, that I did for Danoon Institute. Uh, but if you would like to be a part in helping uh, the cost, because we don't have the means to do it, our insurance is European insurance, and in Europe, our insurance will not cover it. The doctors are saying it's not safe for her to fly home right now. Uh, so we are using an alternative method that they recommend as well uh, that we believe might save her life. And it's the only hope outside of Yeshua HaMashiach. It's the only hope that she has right now, and she has the love of my heart. So if you want to help with that, you can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, you can donate there. Just put a little note in there when you do so that it's for her medical uh, needs. Uh, and as well, those of you that want to support this ministry itself, we do need your help in keeping the message going. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.